Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Mr. Lionel Barrymore and Miss Luanna Patton in Laura E. Richards' Captain January on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present Captain January by Laura E. Richards, a genial story which first appeared in the 1890s and over a period of years has not lost its popularity or its tang of the sea and ships. And tonight we are particularly proud and honored to welcome as starring guest of the evening, Lionel Barrymore, that great figure of the American theater. And we are also delighted to have with us the charming little picture star, Luana Patton. But before we raise the curtain on Captain January, here is a brief message from Frank Goff. My message from Hallmark tonight, Mr. Hilton, is addressed particularly to lovely Luanna Patton, star of Walt Disney's newest picture, So Dear to My Heart. To me? Yes, Luanna, we've planned a grand surprise for you. Surprise? Oh, I love surprises. What is it, Mr. Goff? Oh, not yet. It comes between the acts, Luanna. But now, our curtain. Hallmark Playhouse, starring Lionel Barrymore with Luanna Patton in Laura E. Richards' Captain January. Once upon a time, on an island off the coast of Maine, there lived in a lighthouse an old sea captain named January and a little girl named Star. Blow the man down, bullies, blow (laughs) the boy down. (laughs) Say, you're supposed to be almost asleep. But I'm not sleepy. Look at the light flashing across the water, telling everybody, here we are, we'll take care of you. (laughs) An old man and a child, guardians of the Atlantic. (laughs) Tell me the story again, Captain January. You wear it your bedtime? Oh, yes, but it will still be in my bedtime a half hour from now. Uh, I'll go to sleep the minute you're through. Well, now, let me see. Where will I begin? At the beginning. All right. Ten years ago this very month... That isn't the beginning, Captain January. The beginning is, it had always been lonely on the island. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, it had always been lonely on the island, although having the sea and light for company and an occasional visit from Captain Nazaro did a lot to lighten the hours. And you could always go over to the village. Yes, that's right, that's right. Well, on this particular night, the 14th night of September, ten years ago, Captain Nazro and I were sitting in front of this fire with our pipes. It was blowing up a gale. Yes, sir, it sure was. <laughs> Captain Nazro was helping me make everything shipshape around the light when we heard a ship's guns through the storm. We went out on the cliffs. We could see the ship going down as the light swung round. There was no way in the world to get to us. Something drifting. Where? See? It looks like something white. Nazro? Here, fasten this rope around the rock and hold on to it. You're not going out into that you sea. You hold on to that rope. There's a raft out there and there's something alive on it. I'm going to get it if I can. Can you imagine? 
little thing like that living through this storm? Think she's all right? Oh, sure she is. How old do you reckon she is? Oh, less than a year. Too bad about the mother. Yeah, uh, they were both strapped to the raft with a piece of sailcloth wrapped tight around them. Mother had had a blow in the head. Wreckage from the ship must have hit her. I got some brandy here in case of emergency. Do you suppose... You old fool, you can't give the baby brandy. Who's talking about the baby? I thought maybe I constituted an emergency. I got a bad chill out there, you know. Better warm some more milk for her. Oh, go ahead. Now, don't poke her and let her fall off the cushion. And don't breathe in her face like that. No wonder she's crying. Oh, go burn your fingers. I'll take care of her. (laughs) Nice, baby. Nice little baby. <laughs> she smiled. <laughs> blow the man down, baby. Blow. January, what are you going to do about her? Want me to take her into the minister's house? No, 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 no. I'm going to keep her. The Lord sent her to me, and I'm going to keep her. Keep her? January, how can you bring up a little girl out here alone on a rock like this? Well, natural, the way I see it. All you need to bring up a child is the Lord's help, common sense, and a cow. First two I got already, and I can get the cow. And so I stayed with you, Captain January, and everyone in the village tried to help raise me. (laughs) They certainly did. Most of them I could put up with, but not those meddling sisters. Their name is Mindling, Captain January, not meddling. Mindling, Mindling, well, they're blame nuisances. They started in telling me what to do before I had you for a week, old witches. Captain January, that cradle's too close to the window. And you haven't got that child wrapped up warm enough. Not nearly warm enough. Not nearly warm enough. She's too warm enough. That's why she's so small. She should be much bigger at her age. Much bigger at her age. She's big enough. Whatever her age is, she's exactly the right size for it. We don't expect gratitude or politeness from you, Captain January. Well, that's good. After all, Matilda and I only row out here every week because we feel it's our Christian duty. Christian duty. And if we're not welcome... You're not. Come, sister. Let us go home and pray for this poor baby and this lost man. Oh, lost man. Oh, splots. Captain January, we've brought over some dresses for Star. We've worked on them all week. All week? Week. You can't let a little girl run around in boys' clothes. It's positively indecent. Now, Miranda. Indecent. Now, Matilda, it, it's easier for her to climb around in pants. After all, she must be five now, and she has to learn how to be a little lady. How do you know how old she is? Well, I know when the shipwreck was. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Why don't you go mind somebody else's business and leave mine alone? We see our duty, and we do it. We do it. If Star grows up to be anything, it's going to be in spite of you two. Come, sister. Captain January, we're going. We're going. And we are not coming back. We are not coming back. Until next week, you old marlin-tongued sea hags. Captain January, something has to be done about that child. Something has to be done about that child. What's the matter with her? She has to have schooling. You can't have her growing up ignorant. She needs education. She needs education. Well, she's getting an education. Why can't you two leave Star and me alone? What education is she getting? Well, I'm teaching her myself. I talk to the Reverend and he give me the Bible and the book of Shakespeare and the dictionary. Oh, she's learning out of those. She'll never amount to anything. Never amount to anything. How would you two know? You've only got one brain that's split up between the two of you. (laughs) Coming, Matilda. Coming, Miranda. Good day. Good day. Good riddance.
Captain January, you really sent them packing, didn't you? And they never came back until next week. Yeah, that's when they came out to invite you to Archibald Willoughby's birthday party, wasn't it? It sure was. That, that's one party I'll never forget. <laughs> you to my party. Miss Miranda and Miss Matilda. Oh. Where do you get that dress? They made it. It's my birthday. I know. I'm trying very hard to remember it. I hear you think you're as good as a boy. I do. I'm worth my weight in, boys. I could lick you with one hand tied behind me. You just try it. Hit me. Go ahead. Hit me. Boys, don't hit girls. You can hit me. I'm as good as any boy. All right, I will. You won't hit my other cheek. Go ahead. Smite my other cheek. Sure. All right. Here I come. Give him another uppercut, Star. Ow! That's it. Now a hook to the jaw. Now a hook to the jaw, Star. Ow! Stop. Stop hitting Archibald. It's his birthday. Archibald, stop hitting Star. She's your guest. Miranda, you're always picking on Star, and I've had enough of it. Hello, girl, Matilda. Now give Miranda a hook in the jaw. Captain January. Oh, I am. Oh, Come on, nice Star. Cease firing. Cease firing. Time to hit the port. Yes, and I can't stand it any longer. And another thing, Matilda. Don't you and another thing, me. You, you, you starch apron. I'm through being attached to your strings. <laughs> Captain January, I hope you see now what comes of a man raising a little girl. Matilda and I haven't had a disagreement in all our lives, and now that child has caused a complete rift. Matilda doesn't agree with a word I say anymore. The uh, star's all right. She was wailing the tar out of that kid. It's unchristian to fight. I was only doing what the Bible said. He smite me on my right cheek, and I let him smite me on my left before I hit him. <laughs> Star, now, now, that's not exactly what the Bible had in mind. You see? She doesn't even understand the Bible. Captain January, you've got no right to that child any longer. No? Who has? Her own people. Her own people are dead. How do you know? Did you ever investigate? Investigate? Her mother was wearing a locket with the initials H.M. The ship was out of Boston. The names of the passengers were on her log. You could have written to the steamship company and asked for some information. You could have published inquiries in the Boston paper. There were many things you could have done. Get off this island. Go on, get off and don't come back. She was sent to me and I'm raising her. Well, we'll see whether you're going to continue to raise her. I'll get that child away from you if it's the last thing I do. I'll write to Boston myself. Get off this island before I throw you over the cliff. Go on, get off. We'll see about you, Captain January. We'll just see. I'll write to Boston. I know my duty. There's rough seas ahead, Captain January. Yeah, yeah, rough seas ahead, yep. Yeah. But we'll weather them, shipmate. We'll weather them. No old sea crow's going to bust up this crew. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> You are listening to a dramatization of Captain January on the Hallmark Playhouse. And now... Is it time for my surprise? Yes, Luana. And Mr. Barrymore, if you will do the honors. Uh, close your eyes, Luana. One, two, three. Now open them. What do you see? Hallmark dolls. <laughs> a whole new set of them. What do you yeah. call them, Mr. Barrymore? These dolls, Luana, are the new Hallmark dolls of the nation. It's a fine name and a fine idea. They're so cute. And look at those plumes in their hat. <laughs> They're real feathers. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Barrymore. I just love my new Hallmark dolls of the nation. Well, you'll learn from them, too, because when you open them so they'll stand up. See, Luana? Yeah. 
you'll find a clever rhyme inside that tells you about the country each doll comes from. Now, let's see who they are. Now, here. Here is Sing Toy of China. And Maria of Mexico. Antoinette of France. Yes, And Andy. Rita of Brazil. And look at those wooden shoes on Katrinka of Holland. <laughs> and there's a boy doll. Isn't he handsome? Yeah, yeah, that's John, Royal Canadian Mountie. They say the Mounties always get their man. Well, this one seems to have captured a lovely little girl. Oh, he has, Mr. Barrymore. And look, there's Cowboy Joe from our own Wild West. And here's such a pretty doll. She's Anne of England. Was it a good surprise, Luana? It was a wonderful surprise, Mr. Goss. I'm so happy. Hallmark dolls of the nations are going to make lots of other girls and boys happy too, Luana. Because these charming, colorful little friends from foreign lands that educate while they fascinate are available right now in the fine stores all over America that carry Hallmark cards. There's a beautiful album to put them in, too. But more about that later. It's time to return to James Hilton and the second act of Captain January, starring Lionel Barrymore with Luanna Patton. It's early evening in the old lighthouse off the main coast, and Captain January is telling Star her favorite story, the story of her life. For a few weeks, it was very peaceful on the island, just you and me and the cow and an occasional visit from Captain Nasro. And you did your best to make a lady of me. <laughs> yes, I did my best to make a lady of you. I went back to see the Reverend and borrowed another book. This time it was a book on decorum, and every single afternoon we had a lesson in the living room. Now, let's see. What page were we up to, Star? Page 37. Page 37, page 37, yep. Ah, here we are. Mm -hmm. Now then, what did we learn yesterday? The perfect lady is always polite, hmm? considerate of the comfort and wishes of others, and unobtrusive in her behavior. That's right, that's right. Now then, young ladies at all times should be genteel and delicate. They should sit with their hands folded in their laps in the presence of their elders. How much elder? By any elder at all. Suppose a young lady doesn't want to be a young lady. Well, that's a more advanced lesson. <laughs> now, let's stay with the text. Under no circumstances does a lady ever permit a quarrel to develop between herself and a gentleman. But if one should develop, under no circumstances may a lady raise her voice. Can she hit? I'm afraid not. Well, what can she do? Well, let's see. No, she can look angry. Hmm. She can look hurt. Hmm. She can look at the gentleman in cold, silent, disdainful, outraged dignity. Captain January, that just isn't practical. Besides, you told me Shakespeare said, Beware of entrance to a quarrel, hmm? but being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. Well... Shakespeare wasn't exactly writing a book on etiquette for young ladies. Has that book been read as long as Shakespeare? Not by a gunshot, it hasn't. Well, if you don't mind, Captain January, I think I'll continue to cast my lot in with Shakespeare's. Well, now, still an all-star, you know. You, you've got to be able to act like a lady. I don't want to act like a lady. Captain January, I want to act just like you. But stop. If you don't act like a lady, they might take you away from me. Take me away from you? Hmm? No one's going to take me. I wouldn't go. I'd kick and I'd bite and I'd scratch. And I wouldn't eat. I'd just sit till I died if anyone took me away from you. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without don't you. Don't talk like that. No one's going to take me. Give me the book. I'll learn the lesson. What was it? Young ladies at all times should be genteel and delicate. 
Ladies at all times should be genteel and delicate. They should sit with their hands folded <laughs> in their laps in the presence of their elders. They should sit with their hands folded in their laps in the presence of their elders. Ah, oh, splotch. <laughs> and double splotch. <laughs> then whether Miss Miranda had actually written to Boston as she said she was going to or not. I think you're right, Captain January. Maybe her name should be meddling instead of mindling. Well, we soon found out. A few weeks later, while you were down playing on the shore, there was a knock at the lighthouse door. Afternoon, Captain January. Oh, afternoon, Reverend. This is Mrs. Morton, Captain January. How do you do? She's come to talk with you about Star. Oh, oh, well, come in, come in. My husband's attorney was contacted by an attorney in Boston who had received a letter from a... a Miss Mindling. Mindling, Mindling, Mindling. Oh, yes, Mindling. You see, Captain January, Mrs. Morton's sister was lost in a shipwreck about ten years ago. My hmm. sister and her husband and their baby... Or so we were notified. We weren't able to find out anything about them until um, this letter. I don't think there's any doubt, Captain January, that Starry is Mrs. Morton's niece. Don't you, Reverend? No. There was a locket with the initials H.M., according to the letter. Do you have the locket? No. Captain January, the Mortons are Star's own people. She belongs to them. No, no, no. She belongs to me. I went down to the sea and brought her up. She wouldn't even be alive We're if very I... very grateful. I don't want gratitude. I didn't save her because I wanted gratitude. I saved her because the Almighty willed it. Now, what right have you got to her? I don't want to quarrel with you, Captain January. Did you expect me to hand her over to you without a fight? But she's my sister's child. I have rights. No, no, no. She's mine, and I'm not going to give her up. Captain January, you have to think of the child. I am thinking of the child. My husband and I have children of our own. We can take Star to a wonderful home where she'll have companionship and all the things any little girl would want. We'll treat her exactly as though she were our own little girl. She'll go to school and then to college. You're not a selfish man, Captain January. Surely you wouldn't attempt to keep Star from all the things these people can give her. Things? Give? Toys and parties and party dresses. All the things that make up the world for a child. Circuses and, and music lessons. She sat by that fire every night for ten years. I told her her first fairy story. Sang her her, her first lullaby. I, I bandaged her first skin knee. She's cried in front of that fire and laughed and groaned. She learned from the books on that table and, and, and from the people who come in here and come in and out of this room. This has been her world, a world she's ruled and where she's been much loved. I'll certainly miss her. Captain January, Captain January, I found a starfish. It was up on the beach. And... Uh, Star, oh. this is your aunt, Mrs. Morton. How do you do? I threw the starfish back in. I think you'll be all right. Star, Mrs. Morton is your, your mother's sister. Star, how would you like to come and visit us in Boston for a while? Well, thank you very much. Maybe some other time. I'm very busy right now. You're busy? Yes. I'm halfway through decorum and up to the D's in the dictionary and right in the middle of this above all to thine own self be true. You mean your studies? Yes. You can go to school with our little girls in Boston. Well, thank you, but I'd rather go to school with Captain January. Star, uh, wouldn't you like to live with your aunt and uncle for a while? No, no, I wouldn't, Reverend, I wouldn't. Star, now, your aunt and your uncle love you. And I think it's only fair for you to spend a little time with them. They're going to do wonderful things for you. They'll buy you dolls and pretty dresses and... and I don't you... want any of those things. I want the lighthouse and the ocean and you, Captain January. I don't want to leave. Please, can't you make see? I don't want to leave. Captain please. January. Please, please make her understand. No, I won't go. I won't go. You can kill me and take my body if you want, but I won't go. Ah, oh, now it takes a lot to... Uh, it means it, you know, to a lot to a girl when she grows up and has a nice I home. I have a nice home. And I'm getting along in years now. 
And I think it might be well, easier on me. You see, it's hard for a man of my age to take care of a growing girl. I want to um, die. I want to die. I want to die. Mrs. Morton, do you think... No, I don't. Captain January, forgive us. No one in the world has the right to come between you and that child God has given you. That's about all the story, Star. And it's a half hour past your bedtime. Come along now. You forgot the most wonderful part, Captain January. What's that? They lived happily ever after. In a moment, James Hilton will return to tell you about next week's story. Meanwhile, make a note to see those gay, new, beautiful dolls of the nations. See them tomorrow at the store where you buy your Hallmark cards. Each lovely doll is in full color, stands up by itself, and has a real feather plume in its hat. Inside each doll is a clever rhyme story about the land it comes from. So here's a wonderful way to teach the youngsters you love how children live in other lands. Hallmark Dolls of the Nations cost only 25 cents each and are as easy to send as any Hallmark greeting card. There is a big Hallmark Doll Collector's album to keep them in, too. One you'd expect to cost at least a dollar, but it's only 50 cents. For one dollar, you can buy the album and two Hallmark Dolls. See them tomorrow, sure. The eight new dolls and the Doll Collector's album at the store where you buy your Hallmark greeting cards. Now here again is James Hilton. Thank you for a great performance, Mr. Barrymore. And thank you, Luana, for a great performance, too. And for the makers of Hallmark Cards, I'm grateful to you both for bringing two such lovable characters to life and giving us such an enjoyable evening. It was a pleasure, Mr. Hilton. You know, I grew pretty fond of that grand old duffer, Captain January, and thoroughly enjoyed working with my little leading lady, too. Luana, you played star as a true star would. Thank you, Mr. Barrymore, and thank you again, Mr. Hilton, and thank you, Mr. Goss, and all those nice Hallmark people for such lovely Hallmark dolls of the nations. It's such fun being on the Hallmark program and getting such very nice surprises. It was fun having you, Luana, and an honor to have you with us tonight, Mr. Barrymore. And before we drop the curtain on the Hallmark Playhouse, I'd like to invite you to be with us again next week to hear My Man Godfrey, starring Dick Powell. And I'm sure you'll all be happy to know that the following week we will have as our guest a man who will delight you in his role in an unusually timely story. We refer to Mr. Bob Hope. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Tonight's story was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway with music composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Lionel Barrymore appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor production of Alexander Dumas' The Three Musketeers, starring Lana Turner, Gene Kelly, June Allison, and Van Heflin. Remember, hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present My Man Godfrey, starring Dick Powell. And the following week, our guest will be Bob Hope. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.